Hello and welcome to another mindful stitchery tutorial. In this one, I'm just going to teach you a few basic shawl shapes. Remember the focus of mindful stitchery is prayer shawls, so that'll be the focus of this video. Um, the shapes will include a rectangle shape, a triangle shape, and a half moon or semicircle shape. Um, <clears throat> so let's begin. The first one we'll start with is a rectangle as I believe it's the simplest. Um, I'm going to use just some scrap yarn that I have. <clears throat> and this is worsted weight yarn and I have a size 7 or a 4.5 millimeter hook. Um, let's begin. As we discussed in the previous video, you're going to start your project with a slip knot. And a rectangle is going to be the simplest. You're simply going to chain um, however many stitches you think that you need. Um, remember, since you're making a shawl, you want your, um, your chain to be longer than a scarf, but shorter than a blanket. Um, I would shoot for about 15 to 18 inches. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to make a short, a short one. Um, so you start with your chain and then you pick a stitch. If you are a beginner, I would recommend um, going back to the video with the basics that I that was before this one, the basics of crochet, and just simply pick a stitch that you prefer, um, whether it's single crochet, and if that's what you choose, you'll start in the second chain from the hook. If you choose half double, start in the third chain. Uh, a double, you could also start in the third chain, and if you, st if you decide you wanna do a treble, um, start in the fourth chain from the hook. Um, this just helps you to get the height that you're looking for. In videos to come, I'll show you um, more decorative stitches to use for your shawl so you're not just doing the same thing over and over again. But if you're a beginner, I would say just start with a double crochet. <clears throat> so you're gonna go to the second chain from, or the third chain from the hook, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Yarn over insert your hook and begin. Um, you can get a little more creative and we can try the V, the granny stitch, which is kind of like a V. Um, we could do just the V stitch, whatever it is. Um, like I said, I will have tutorials coming soon about different stitches that you can do when you choose a rectangle shaped shawl. For now though, you're just gonna use the basic stitches that we included in the basics of crochet video and go from there. So <clears throat> crochet to the end and you're just gonna keep building. Once you get to the end of however many you chained, um, I'll show you how to turn your work. I highly recommend if you do choose a rectangle to uh, get a tape measure and just see how long your chain is. Um, you want to make sure, like I said, that it's not narrow, too narrow to be a scarf and you don't want to make it too big that it's a blanket. You just want to make it big enough. And here we have come across a knot. This yarn, I think I mentioned, is just stash yarn. So it, and it was stashed from a grab bag that I got. So I guess the person before me put a knot in it. If you come across a knot, you can untie it and weave it. I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of lazy. I honestly just try to blend it in and then trim it down. So maybe grab some scissors and cut off the ends there. Um, but since we're not so far along, I could just pull back. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to keep on going. So since we chose a double crochet, once we get to the end of the row, we're going to chain two to get our height for the next row, turn our work, and continue. Uh, I don't want you to be bored while crocheting, so if you're just learning, I think 
a single type of stitch is a good place to start. Catch your rhythm, really understand, and that gives you plenty of time to focus your energies on praying for the individual whom you're making the shawl for. If, however, you're a little further along and you're more comfortable with your stitches, stay tuned for videos to follow. So I'm going to stop there. Um, the point, I think you get rectangle, just chain, um, chain the amount that you want for the length that you want, and then stitch along. I would say when you, as your, as your uh, rectangle begins to grow, try it on. Um, you want the shawl, I think, to be long enough that it's cozy. Um, maybe that's 60 inches, maybe it's 70, 72. At least your arm's length, but probably a little bit more because this prayer shawl is supposed to wrap around and love somebody, right? So you want them to be all cozy when they're wearing it. On to the next shape. We're going to do the half moon. And for this one, again, you just start with a slip knot. And I'm going to chain three. And then one thing I didn't discuss in the um, basics video is a slip stitch, which is used to join or to move your yarn along to another spot. And all that is, is inserting your yarn, pulling it through, and then pulling it through. So we didn't yarn over and pull through again. Um, and then find your hole, the little circle that you made there. And for the purposes of this shape, we're going to use a double crochet. So I'm going to double crochet. Oh, nope, I'm sorry. I'm going to chain up two, get my height, and I'm going to double crochet in the little loop that I made. If I can find it. Hang on. Just jab it in here. <laughs> um... Okay, double crochet. So we have really like one and two. I'm gonna go ahead and double crochet three, just for the purposes of what we're doing. So we made a loop, a chain of three. We joined them together with a slip stitch. We chained two to get height and we double crocheted two. And now we're going to chain two one, two. We're going to turn our work and we're going to pick the side that we want to grow. So technically we have three stitches here. One, two, and then the chain. Um, but I, I don't think I'm going to count it as a stitch in this video just because it makes things more difficult to see. But we want to pick a side then whatever side we pick is the side we want to grow. So you're going to need a, um, a stitch marker, which I did not get one out, but you can find plenty of different kinds of stitch markers. You could use a safety pin, a bobby pin, um, a hair clip, anything you can find to mark one side. And you're going to increase on that side only. So we're going to start with an increase. I'm going to choose this side as my increase. And I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to create two double crochet in my first stitch. So I created one and usually we would move on, but here I'm going to create a second in the same loop that I just created that first double crochet in. And voila, you have increased the amount of stitches on that row. And then I'm gonna go on to the next stitch. And that's a little bit wonky, but it'll work out. Um, then we're gonna chain two, turn our work, and we're going to crochet across. One, two, three. 
Okay, so I'm gonna chain two to come up, turn our work, and remember this side we're increasing on. So we're gonna do two double crochet in our first stitch of the row. And the stitch marker, if you have one, just helps you to know that you're increasing on the correct side. Finish the row, chain two, and turn. This is not my increase, so I'm gonna do just one in every stitch across. And you're gonna continue that pattern Honestly, I would say until you're halfway through the yarn that you have. So if you have, let's say you got three skeins of yarn or balls of yarn or however you want to classify it. If you got three, then work through one and a half. And if you got four, you know, then work through two. Um before you start your decreases. So here we are on the side that we increase and we're going to just increase it in the first stitch and then a double in each stitch after. And while this sample is going to look kind of wonky, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to decrease. And again, we want to decrease only on the side that we've been increasing on and that way we'll get that rounded shape of like the semicircle or half moon. Um, so we chain up two, crochet across, just one in every stitch. And as you see that you're getting halfway through your yarn, you may just kind of stop your increases to make it more round in the center than a point. Um, that way it keeps the more circular shape. It's really your discretion. Um, let's see, what's this one? This one was not an increase row. Okay, so chain up two, and now we're going to decrease. And all that means is now we chained up two, we're gonna single crochet in the first, which remember we've been putting two, I'm sorry, we're gonna double crochet in the first, but we're only gonna do one. And I finished that stitch, forgive me. Just pull that back. Okay. Sorry, my brain and my mouth are not coordinating very well. We chained up two. Okay, so to decrease, we're gonna yarn over, like we're gonna double crochet, stick our hook through, pull up one, yarn over, take off two. And now you have two stitches. But instead of fin yarning over and finishing the stitch, we're gonna move on to the next spot. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook in the second spot, yarn over, pull back, yarn over, take off two, yarn over, take off three and you have just started your decrease. And now you're going to work across the row. And I will show you that again once we get there. Oops, I did not go through both bars. <clears throat> okay, so we finished that row. This is just a regular crochet across row and forgive me if I'm going kind of fast but we did cover the basics in the other video if you're struggling with the concepts please feel free to ask questions below um so here we are at the end and this is where we had our decrease you're just gonna stab your hook in the same way it, it, there's a couple more loops there but you just want to go in the top one which is your V like you've been doing, yarn over, pick up, and treat it like a normal one. Okay, chain to height, turn your work, and we're gonna do another decrease. 
So we yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull back, yarn over, take off two, and stop for that stitch. So now we're gonna move on to the next one. Yarn over, insert hook in the second stitch, yarn over, bring it back, yarn over, take off two, yarn over, take off three. And voila, you are now an expert in decreasing in double crochet. And you're going to continue that pattern just like you did in the increasing and you'll start to see the shape take form. And that's all we're gonna do for that one. And the last one I wanna show you is a triangle shape. So let me, this one's more of a full skein, so let me just get some off before we get started because it's not gonna roll quite as nicely as the little balls do. So this one's gonna look almost exactly like this one did with one single difference. <clears throat> so we're going to make our slip knot. We're going to chain three. We're going to go back to our first stitch and join with this, or our first chain, I'm sorry, and join with a slip stitch where we insert our hook, yarn over and pull through, and then pull through again. And it's easier if you hold your fingers kind of in that little spot. That way you can find your hole a little better. Um, now chain up two. <clears throat> yarn over and we're going to do two double crochet just like we did in the last one all right got our little thing thing and now this circle is kind of funky looking but when you weave in this end if you work it up this side of your shawl it's going to close that gap quite nicely okay <clears throat> so chain two for height for the next row turn our work and this time we're just going to increase in the first stitch of every row so what does that mean two double crochet in the first stitch voila i think this shape is best, honestly, for a beginner who just wants to keep themselves a little more entertained. So we worked ourselves to the end of the row. We're gonna chain two. And by entertained, I just mean you're increasing. So it's just a small bit of variety with every row instead of just plain double crochet in every stitch. So we're at the front of the row. And we're going to do two double crochet in the first stitch. And a single in every stitch across. Um, a cool thing about any of these is if you, maybe you get bored and you want to change the appearance, say you make your triangle like, what, 24 inches by 24 inches by 24 inches, and you're like, I'm bored. Maybe you want to finish off that triangle and then just start crocheting around it like a border type thing and building it up in that way. Uh, maybe you want to crochet in rows, like stripes, I mean. Uh, you can do that with any of these. Um, for the triangle, you are working from the bottom up. From For the like, semi-circle shape, you're working across. So if you wanted to do stripes for this shape, they're gonna go um, vertically. And if you wanted to do stripes for this shape, 
they would go horizontally. And to do stripes just means you pick a different color. And when you want to, let me see if I have my scissors handy. Okay. Let's say I'm like, oh, I'm done with this row. Or, well, I can't because I chained up. So hang on. <laughs> Let's say I finished the row. I'm like, mm, I am done with this color. Well, let me show you what you do. Prepare to be mind blown because it is so simple. If, however, you decide you don't want to change colors, if you get, I mean, you don't want to change yarns, you can get um, variegated yarn. Well, this is ombre, but it's going to change colors as we go for me, which is going to be interesting. You can get self-striping yarn, which is, again, going to change colors. Um, you can get all kinds of stuff. But, okay, so I'm like super tired of this orange. So I'm just going to cut the end, pull up my yarn, and I'm done with that color. Let's say I want to add this yellow that we worked on over here. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to now, I always create a slip knot first. You don't have to. I've seen other people that just start. Um, and let me show you both ways. So some people just start by, they're on their, the side of the work that they're working on. They, like we're double crocheting. So we would yarn over, insert, and then, you know, whatever it is that we're doing. My brain can't coordinate that. Like, as you saw, I just did a single crochet and we're working in double and I needed a chain. So for me, that's too tough. If your brain can make that happen, more power to you. However, mine cannot. <laughs> so I always start with a slip stitch, get the yarn on my hook, and then Make sure your working yarn is what you're using. You don't want to start crocheting with the tail and find out that you have to pull back. Um, so I'm going to insert and chain like we would. It can get a little funky if your previous row just is loose. So we chain one, chain two, and then just begin. And we're going to do two stitches in the, or yeah, two double crochet in the first, and then continue in pattern. And if it starts to look wonky, just, you know, pull on your ends, and then when you're done, sew them in, and you'll be good to go. Right? if you've chosen the rectangle, and maybe you get bored, and you want to switch it up, or maybe you're using up stash and you want to just put in stripes or borders or whatever. Be creative. You have every license to do whatever it is that you feel called to do. Just remember that the focus of the shawl is not necessarily its appearance. Do we want to give an ugly piece of work? No. If it has mistakes, is that okay? Absolutely, because guess what? Only God is perfect. And so if you have a mistake, it's a-okay. I want to say I read somewhere that Amish people actually put in mistakes in their work because they don't want it to be perfect. Um, all that to say, just remember the focus of the shawl is not... Is not um, necessarily how it looks. It's praying for the individual. It's centering your heart and your mind in a prayerful way that you would be focused on the Lord 
and almost meditatively just spending time with him while also creating something for someone that is maybe in need or is celebrating or whatever it is. Um, and that is where I'm going to stop. You see, we finished a shape, or well, I guess it would look like this, huh? Because it's a triangle and it's just going to grow. Um, I suppose it could be this way. It doesn't really matter. The point is, make something big and lovely that somebody can wrap themselves up in and know that they were prayed for. I briefly touched on it, but I think it's safe to say that you need a minimum of three, a minimum of two to three skeins of yarn. I would stop at four, um, maybe five if you're doing a bulky yarn. We haven't really, I haven't really shown you a bulky yarn yet because I don't have tons of it just on hand. But bulky, I think, is good for a shawl because it's going to make it grow a lot faster. You'll use a bigger hook, you'll have thicker yarn, and you'll just kind of blow through the project. But for now, this is it. So we talked about a rectangle where you just chain a certain length and then work until it's, I'm sorry, chain a certain width and work until it's the length that you want. We talked about the semicircle, where you increase only on one side and decrease on that same side once you're about halfway through your yarn. And then we talked about, excuse me, the triangle, where you are going to increase at the beginning of each row. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment box below. Like, share, subscribe, all the good things and stay tuned for the next video. Until then, stay blessed.